G'day friends, welcome to day 11 of Mermaid 2018. I hope you're having a great Friday, or if you're uh, in one of those future time zones, hope you're having a great Saturday. I, uh, I wish you all the best for your Saturday endeavors. Anyway, today I'm doing a, uh, a piece that you'd almost be forgiven if you thought I was in Inktober at this point. <laughs> I'm doing what I was doing last Inktober. I'm using my carbon ink fountain pen. I'm using the, uh, the ink that I used and some water and I'm just going in on this piece. Now, I really, really like this. This is something I sketched out at the beginning of um, Mermaid, and I said I wanted to make it into a final piece, so today is the day, and I really, really enjoy how it turned out. I think this kind of illustration really lent itself well to the uh, the way that I coloured it, because it's it's black and white, like Oliver's a white cat, Bianca's a black cat, so I could do the um, high contrast, I could literally flip the image halfway through, and... Um, you know, it just, it looks very yin and yang to me. So I really like that. I think it came out really well and I'm just super happy with it. I don't know. I, I don't have plans on making this anything. Like I do want to do two big portraits of the cats for the home because um, I feel like dog people really celebrate their pets and like put photos everywhere. But I don't know about cat people. Do we do that? I, I haven't done that before. And we don't have like lots of family photos or anything. So I think two massive um, cat portraits would be really nice. <laughs> Um, no, something really graphic, like if it was just a 19 inch by 24 inch, like big, big poster size, but like all that was in there was just like a little cat head popping out the bottom of the, the frame. I've seen something like this before in Ikea or somewhere I saw a, a picture like that and I thought that would be so cute if it was just Bianca. Um, but a part of me wants to paint it, but then a part of me also wants Steve just to photograph it because then it literally would be Bianca and Oliver because I'm not great at drawing animals. Um, it's something that I, I say I should practice, but then again, like, I only really want to practice the things that I want to learn. <laughs> I don't, I've never really had a desire to draw animals or to learn how to draw animals. I think it would be interesting. I don't think that I would um, not be able to do it. I just, it's, it's just not a desire I have. So um, maybe that's a challenge I'll take up one day, or maybe that's something I will never revisit. And this will be the only time you ever hear me talk about it. But um, uh, you know, I will, I will venture into that area just to be able to draw the cats because I love the cats. Um, and yeah, but black and white, I mean, Oliver was white. Oliver started pe becoming peaches and cream. He was like that when he was a kitten, like he started getting a little bit darker and then the orange started coming out more and more, but I think he's more orange now than he is white. Um, so I'm thinking of trading him in. <laughs> uh, no, he is very naughty, but I would never get rid of him. That actually kind of makes me upset to even think about. He is super affectionate. I couldn't imagine him at any other place. Do you do that with your pets? Do you kind of think like, how would you live anywhere else? Like I spoil you rotten. You would never have this life anywhere else. Sometimes I think they take me for granted. Um, but Oliver and Bianca are still fighting. I think they will always fight because he's just always going to be a bit of a brat and she's just always going to be a bit of a diva. I mean, their personalities are just so different. He is just trash. He gets in the bin, takes everything out, tries to eat plastic. She tries to eat plastic, but like she'll go and get the nice plastic from like, you know, a wrapper from a paint marker at my table. She'll just nibble at it like a queen. And uh, Oliver will literally be in, not even the recycles bin, in the literal actual real bin that we have pulled the lid off and is just rummaging around in there for like an old tin of cat food that he think he might be able to get a you know a scrap out of he's just a mess and then <laughs> we have um i want to say floorboards but they're not they're like that it's like that laminate floorboard you know like the gray washed wood it looks like wooden floors but they're not um or maybe they are no, I don't think they feel like it. Either way, uh, we used to have carpet, so the cats had a lot of traction, <laughs> which they don't have in this place. So Oliver is just always running around and he gets on his witching hours and he gets spooked by everything and he's just running around the house, but he can't stop himself. And he hasn't learned yet. And I, every now and again, you'll hear this little, and then bang, like just literally crashing into a wall <laughs> and his little jingle bell going along as you do it. It just looks like, I mean, it sounds like Rudolph got in a car crash. <laughs> so. Um, so I'm, I look, I'm loving them. I love the cats. I will never not love cats. I'm such a cat person. I'm, I'm biased because we were raised with Siamese. So I always feel like Siamese are the best. I just think they have a lot of personality. And sometimes I love how ugly they are with their, uh, cross eyes. 
But Oliver doesn't have crossed eyes. I've seen him a couple of times get crossed eyes. He's got beautiful blue eyes though. So, I mean, that's new for me because all my other, all my other Siamese had beautiful eyes, but Oliver's are like really light ice blue. Just very captivating. <laughs> I just think it works really well for his coloring, like peaches and cream and ice blue. Such a good color combination. In fact, I think I'm going to term that the Oliver combination. <laughs> um, but anyway, some things I like about this piece. I love the texture in it. This is what I remember loving about um, Inktober last year was experimenting with all of these water textures that you could get with this ink. Now. I want to make a, uh, a little speech here. Now, I just wanted to say, if you're, if you're interested in doing a lot of this texture stuff, this texture work, or doing lots of patterns, or using lots of colors, might I suggest, if you're feeling a little overwhelmed, if you look at your piece and you think, oh, there's so much going on, what am I doing, why does it look wrong, um, maybe take away one of the elements. So when I'm doing a, like a very, very textured piece like this, I might draw really simply. Like the illustration itself might be as simple as what you see here. Um, if I'm trying to draw, like make full use out of the effect of that texture in the background, I don't want to start adding in tons of patterns and tons of colors on top. Otherwise the whole thing's just going to look really busy. I think it helps with your balance. If you're going to do a really, really um, simple drawing to do a very, very, you know, involved coloring, or if you're going to do a very, very intricate drawing to just keep the coloring really simple or limit your color palette. Um, I find that that's a simple way to think about it if you're if you're struggling with trying to find the balance in your pieces, but at the same time, rules are made to be broken. It's not to say that that piece of advice is going to get you to where you want to get to. Um, some people really love things looking very hectic. I do. There's certain times where I will just go completely overboard and um, disregard all the rules. I'll add all the texture, all the color, all the illustration, all, you know, everything. I will probably look at it and think, wow, that's a lot, but sometimes I really enjoy it. And then other times I think, well, like, could have maybe not added this, maybe that would have made it work. Or this is kind of a feature that I didn't need. It doesn't add to the piece, it just kind of takes away from it. So um, just a little tip, I guess, for today, if you wanted to take away anything from this, uh, I, I think it really, really does help if you if you find the balance. It's like, um, it, I think it was Coco Chanel that said, if you put all your accessories on and then you remove one thing before you leave the house. Um, I, I guess in the same way. If it wasn't her, I'm gonna die. Who said that? <laughs> that wasn't even the right quote. I know I didn't even quote it properly, but now I'm thinking maybe it wasn't Chanel. Um, either way. I, uh, I have lost my fashion knowledge. Um, either way, I just wanted to let you know that sometimes it is it is just as simple as removing one element. Like, don't think that it's something you're doing wrong or that the whole thing needs to be changed or your whole approach needs to change. Um, maybe just finding the balance in either, you know, an, a really detailed illustration and simple coloring or really detailed textures and patterns and simple illustration. For stuff like that, maybe maybe it's a helpful hint, maybe it's not. Either way, I'll leave it with you. Let me know if it was helpful. Um, thanks for watching today, guys, and uh, until tomorrow, happy Friday or Saturday. Bye.